Today, I'm going to show you something exciting. I use Google Gemini to vibe code a custom interface. And behind the scenes, this interface runs on an N8N automation. The engine powering it is Nano Banana, which was just released by Google a few days ago. I'll be using its API to generate the image, and then I'll take it even further by using Google VEO3 to transform that image into a complete UGC video. And if you don't know already, you can now access Nano Banana directly inside Gemini, as well as in Google's AI Studio. On top of that, most of the major API aggregators have already integrated support for it, which makes connecting and experimenting with the model much easier. The best part is that the pricing is also quite good. Generating a UGC video like this comes in at less than half a dollar, making it both powerful and cost effective. And here's something I really want you to notice. If you check Google Trends, you'll see how fast terms like N8N, Vibe Coding, Cloud Code, and Google Gemini are climbing. These tools are exploding in popularity. And if you start using them right now, you'll stay ahead of the curve. The truth is, they're only going to get better and better every single day. And the earlier you start, the clearer the advantage you'll have over everyone else who waits. That's why I strongly recommend you join one of my communities. In the free community, you'll find a lot of members, simply because it's open to everyone. But in the paid automation tribe, you get access to far more. More automations, more interfaces, and full tutorials. For example, the exact workflow I'm showing you today will be available in the premium community. You'll be able to download not just this one, but 38 automations. And this will be the 39th, which I'll post in the classroom right after this tutorial. So, if you're serious about building with AI, don't just watch, join, practice, and start creating. Now, let me show you what I did with the Google Gemini. I gave it nothing but text instructions, and it generated a working interface for me without writing a single line of code. To build this interface, I designed it so that it sends data directly to a webhook. That webhook is connected to a switch node with three different branches, which I'll show you later. Depending on which step you've reached in the automation, it will send different instructions back to the webhook and trigger the next action. And like magic, after a few iterations and testing, I ended up with this interface. At first glance, it doesn't look complicated, but that's only because you're not seeing all the steps happening in the background. Let me walk you through how it works. The main purpose of this interface is to generate custom UGC videos. With it, you can mix and match special characters and products, combine those images, and send them into N8N to generate polished visuals, all without touching Photoshop or any traditional editing software. Before we start this tutorial, if you're already a member of my paid community, you can simply download the N8N automation and import it into your N8N instance by clicking the three small dots in the editor. If you're not a member, don't worry. Stay with me until the end, because I'll show you step-by-step -step how to build this automation from scratch. You can also download the custom interface. Just open the file with a text editor and go to line 195. Here, replace the placeholder webhook with your own webhook URL. To find your webhook URL in N8N, click on the first node of your workflow. You'll see the webhook URL there. Now, let me show you how this works in practice. First, I'll upload an image into the interface, in this case, a cartoon woman. On the right side, I'll add a glass of mojito. After uploading the first image, you can draw a mask directly on it with your mouse marking the area where you want the mojito to appear. Next, just add a simple prompt, nothing too fancy. For example, add the mojito in the hand of the woman. Then click Generate Image. But before you do that, go back into N8N and click Execute Workflow. Right now, the webhook is running in test mode, so you'll be able to see exactly what happens behind the scenes. Once you finish this tutorial and you're happy with the results, you can enable the automation and update your HTML file with your production webhook, URL. Again, you'll find that on the first node in N8N. To generate the first image, 
it usually takes around 20 to 30 seconds. As you can see, the result looks amazing. So now we can move to the next step. I built this interface knowing that Nano Banana only returns one to one aspect ratio images. That's why I added a cropping tool directly into the interface. Again, I used Gemini to generate this interface because I already knew exactly what features I needed and what I didn't. For this example, I'll select a vertical aspect ratio, resize the frame slightly, and then click on Crop. Now I've got the perfect image ready to send to the Google VEO 3 API. To generate a video, all you need is two simple text inputs. In the first text area, add a short prompt. For my example, I'll use Promote this glass of mojito. In the dialog box, add the spoken line for the video. Refreshing, smooth, and only today. Enjoy our mojito for a special price at McDonald's. Don't miss out. You can, of course, tailor this text depending on the brand, product, or character you're working with. Once that's set, click Generate Video. At this point, the system will return only the task ID. That's because I'm using a service I've relied on in many of my previous videos, key.ai. The task ID is important because generating a video takes more than three to four minutes, and it's not possible to return the finished video locally if the wait time exceeds two minutes. So I'll pause here, and I'll come back once the video has finished rendering. After about four to five minutes, the video should be ready. Let's go ahead and check it. If it's not there immediately, don't worry. Just click on Check Video Status a few times until the result appears. In my case, before I can click on Check Video Status, I first need to re-enable the automation by clicking on Execute Workflow inside N8N. And don't forget, at this stage, you should be using your production webhook URL, and your automation must be set to active in order for the video to be delivered properly. Now let's play the video and take a look at the final result. Refreshing, smooth, and only today a lay. Enjoy our mojito for a special price at McDonald's. Don't miss out. I think the result is amazing. In just a few minutes, you can generate a complete UGC video like this. In my case, it's a cartoon style, but you could just as easily use an animal, a real person, or even a brand mascot. And here's the most important part, the price. A video like this costs less than half a dollar. If you were to hire someone on a freelance website, you'd pay a few hundred dollars for something similar. But now it's affordable, and if you know how to use it, you can apply it to affiliate programs, product promos, or even client projects. Later in this video, I'll show you more examples. But first, let me explain how this automation was built. The first node is a webhook. Make sure you set the HTTP method to post, and in the response field, choose using respond to webhooks. Next, we have a switch node with three branches, generate images, generate videos, check videos. When I designed the interface, I knew I'd need these three steps, so I planned everything on paper first. Spending a few minutes mapping it out up front will save you hours later. And before we dive deeper, make sure you subscribe to this channel, because soon I'll be releasing more advanced tutorials on vibe coding. In the first branch, I start with an aggregate node, the reference image, the product image, the mask image. Then I have three HTTP request nodes. Each one connects to my own API, which is free to download, but you'll need to host it on your own server. If you haven't seen it yet, I recommend checking out my other YouTube video, where I explain exactly how to set this up. What this API does is simple. The interface sends the images in binary format and the API transforms them into real links. The best part? You don't need to pay for another external service. After that, I use two merge nodes. I'll show you the settings for each one on screen. Next is a set node, where I map the image URLs properly. Then comes another HTTP request node. This one sends the request to key.ai's API to generate the image. Make sure you copy my JSON structure exactly, replace it with your own API key, and don't waste time trying to use mine. I'll delete it as soon as I finish this tutorial. Here's what's important. In this request, I'm sending all three images directly to the Nano Banana API. 
Next, I added a wait node, set to 40 seconds. Sometimes the response comes back in 10 seconds, but I'd rather leave extra buffer time to be safe. After the wait, I use another HTTP request node to fetch the image. You'll need to include the task ID here, and again, make sure you use your own bearer API code. When the image is ready, key.ai sends back a final result link. To download it and convert it into a binary file, I use one more HTTP request node, this time with the get method. Finally, the last node in this branch is respond to webhook, which delivers the image back to the interface. One important note, when you're asking Google Gemini to generate the interface, you must specify that the response should receive the image in binary format. This way, Gemini knows exactly how to structure the code correctly. Now let's move on to the second branch, generate video. In this branch, I'm again using my own API, that's available for free, to transform the binary image into a usable URL. The most important node here is the one that actually generates the video using Google VO3. This is where the magic happens. Make sure you copy my exact settings, insert your own API key, and use the JSON code I'm showing on screen. Next, I need a special value for the last node in this branch, the task ID. To capture it, I use a set node, which stores that value. Finally, the branch ends with a respond to webhook node. This webhook returns the task ID into the form so that I can use it later to check the video's status. The last branch is much simpler. It starts with an HTTP request node that checks whether the video is ready. Just follow my settings carefully and don't forget to add your bearer API key. Then I add another HTTP request node to actually download the video once it's complete. This converts the video into a binary file. Here, make sure you take the URL from key.ai, set the request method to get, and test it. And finally, the very last node of this branch, and of the entire automation, is another respond to webhook node. This sends the finished video back into the interface. I'll show you the exact settings on screen so you can replicate it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful. Remember, you can download the full automations inside my Automation Tribe community. You'll find the link down in the description. Now, let me show you a few more examples so you can see what else is possible with this workflow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. I really like this oil. It makes me feel special. Nothing beats an ice-cold Coca-Cola. Data. Refreshing, classic, and always the real taste.